Well, hello and good morning, everybody. This is Jeremiah, and we're having another fantastic Land Effects webinar today. We are going to be talking about all kinds of cool software stuff. Um, let me go over a couple super quick housekeeping items. Um, we there is at the very top of your screen. There's a little view options. I like to just know where that is in case I need to exit full screen mode, but just so you know where that is, and. I also recommend you uh, familiarize yourself with where the question and answer box is. That's the Q and A little button at the bottom. And in fact, if you go ahead and just click it right now, you'll see it brings up that little window. You can get that situated on your screen because uh, what's really nice is it'll be quicker for you to type in your questions. And also you'll be able to see uh, the answers that we type for any other questions. So it's a nice little companion, um, but I'm sure we'll also be able to uh, you know, um, answer many of your questions live. Uh, it's not only being typed answers, we'll, we'll cover all kinds of things. Uh, and we are also recording this because we're gonna go over a lot of really neat things. I mean, we really did compile a pretty cool list of, like it says, I mean, all the little pieces of software that we really like, um, um, or that we just absolutely rely on on a daily basis. And so um, it's a lot of fun putting this together. So uh, I'm gonna let Forrest have the fun and uh, take us away here. Thanks, Chair. Hey, and good morning, everybody. Thanks for joining us. Um, yeah, so this is me. Uh, you might have spoken with me in the past on a tech support ticket uh, several years ago um, and uh, as long as well as many other people here, we all wear many, many hats here at Land Effects. And we uh, rely on software just like you. We spend a lot of time in front of computers. Um, and there's just a ton of software out there. The, the options are kind of overwhelming. So we were, when we were thinking of webinars, we're like, well, what can we do that would really be valuable for people? Being that now we spend most of our days sitting in front of computers and just trying not to eat too much. Let's, you know, try to make our screen times a little bit more efficient and less miserable. So we're going to talk about software and that's going to include PC software for Windows, Mac software, um, lots of web-based software that runs in a browser. That's cloud-based software and browser-based software has really come into its own in the last few years. Um, Chrome plugins are extremely valuable for us and of course phone apps. I'm sure most of you know by now that we're a cross-platform office. Even though Land Effects is Windows only, we run our business on both Mac and Windows. And there's a lot of factors of why we do that, but it's definitely like highly productive and extremely convenient for us. So it's nice to be fluent in multiple platforms. It's kind of like being fluent in both Revit and AutoCAD, right? Like you want to know all the things, not just the one little thing. So we do both PC and Mac. And when we were compiling this list, uh, we pulled everyone in the office and we, we talked to everybody and we compiled this big list of what everybody uses and kind of roughly categorized it into these seven categories. PDF tools, uh, definitely a must. We're all dealing with PDFs every day and sometimes even just simple editing is kind of a pain. Um, productivity tools, graphics and design tools, that holds a special place in my heart. I spend a lot of time with a lot of these tools uh, helping everybody here on the graphics team. Uh, development tools, uh, video, travel, and you know, a little bit of miscellaneous at the end. So um, PDF tools, that's definitely a really common issue. I'm sure you've come across like a contract that you have to fill out and date and sign. And you know, us Mac users are kind of spoiled because we can create and edit uh, PDFs from any program, but on Windows it's a little bit trickier. Um, I don't know what you use, Jer, to edit PDFs on Windows. 
Um, I know that Adobe Acrobat is great, but it's just a little bit, it's a huge program and it's subscription priced and it's not for everybody. Well, I've been a Foxit guy for years. Have you? That's what a lot of people are saying that Foxit is a real winner on the Windows side. Um, I think Amanda was talking to a client yesterday about a, a Foxit thing. So that's good to know. That's uh, kind of reinforcing some of the research that we were doing. It's like, okay, Foxit was definitely on the top of that list. So for Windows, yeah, we recommend using Foxit. There's some other ones out there. This is PDF element. Um, but there's also, like I said now, uh, online tools are really coming into their own. There's a bunch of great web tools out there that you can just use you can log on to, oops, let me get out of the presentation mode here because I have a couple lined up here. Like this guy right here. This guy is really cool. You can just upload a PDF and you can do all these things and then download it. So you can convert, you can edit, you can sign, you can fill out contracts. And there's a couple of these online that are really, really nice. And that's just kind of showing how software is going these days. Now that everything's getting faster and faster, a lot of this stuff you could just do right inside your browser. So I'm a fan of that. This is how I edit contracts and add signatures on the Mac. It's a pretty neat little process. There's this like editing tools button that pops out this toolbar. And then I have a couple signatures saved. And as a matter of fact, for the last two years, I've been Crystal's go-to guy to make sure and add her, her signature on all the contracts. And it's on my long list of things to do to set this up on her computer and teach her how to do it. So she doesn't ask me to sign a PDF for her ever again, but uh, we'll see if we can get that done next week. Maybe I'll make her watch the webinar. Um, <laughs> So this this one's really fun and you can as you can see there's like text tools in here drawing tools and other things so that you can fill out the contract date it and then click boom drag the signature right there that makes it really nice. Um, another thing that we uh, have come across in some of our struggles is uh, printing web pages you know if, if you ever just try to print directly from a browser you'll notice that it prints all wonky and the formatting is all off and everything's messed up. So the best way to do that is to uh, use a Chrome plugin that will capture the PDF, or, sorry, it'll capture the web page as a PDF so that then you can open the PDF and print it and it retains all the formatting, all the images, all the fonts and everything, all the layout stuff. So this has proven extremely handy for us. As you know, we're uh, always updating our website. And when it comes time to just print out an existing page from our website and mark on it and do some drawings and stuff like that, these tools are absolutely essential. And I'm sure there's gonna be plenty of times in your professional career where you need to print out a web page and printing the web page, it's just a bummer. So make sure you get one of these plugins uh, so that you can, and you can see here in this menu, I can capture the entire page as a plugin or part of the page, or I can do selection where it'll just give me the selection tool. I can fi figure out which part of the web page I'd like to capture. And it makes it really easy. Uh, there's a couple here that I recommend. These aren't the only PDF um, capture plugins for Chrome. Those are just the ones I have experience with. And they're also some that are consistently at the top of the rankings. Now, you'll probably notice that I've said Chrome several times in this presentation already. Uh, we definitely use Chrome here in the office. We definitely recommend it. Um, and we definitely recommend not using the default Windows um, browser, Edge. Uh, you'll just have a better experience with something like Chrome and if you're averse to Chrome, as some people are, it's a little bit heavy. It's, it definitely takes a lot of resources more than some of the other browsers. Uh, Firefox is a more lightweight option and you still have all of the cool things like plugins and uh, stuff like that. So productivity, I think we're gonna get productive now. We're gonna get some stuff done. 
This is something that we struggled with. We went through a couple of different project management platforms before we landed on Freedcamp. And we love Freedcamp. We use it. Um, we use it so much we kind of learn to dislike it at times when we get all of the email notifications and we get a lot. Uh, we're a very busy office, so you know we'll get dozens and dozens and dozens of free camp emails a day, but they're all extremely valuable. It'll say like, oh, Damon, Damien made a comment on this one project that I'm involved with that I need to know this thing about this other project. It's, it's really great to use. It's really simple. It's really easy. Uh, the interface is nice and clean, not cluttered. Kind of like Rike is really kind of cluttered and non-intuitive. So uh, looking at you, Rike, fix your interface. Uh, runs in the browser, just like a lot of my favorite software does now. Um, email notifications. And for people that are project management nerds, it does offer all of the different uh, views that you can do in the... Uh, modern project management interfaces. And this kind of, that's just a quick screenshot of uh, some, one of the projects that I was involved in. And uh, just kind of showing how you can add stuff to it, attachments. It's, uh, it's really convenient. We like it. We use it to do basically everything, I think. And of course, you've heard us recommend password managers before. Um, we tried uh, KeePass originally, and then we tried 1Password for a while, and now we've settled on LastPass as a company-wide password manager for us. And there's, you know, there's other good password managers out there. This is just the one that we use and we like. It's really nice, really easy. There's a quick little screenshot here showing it accessed in Chrome, so I can just quickly type in what password I'm looking for in the vault that I have access to. And it's, you know, it's a great piece of software. It's, a, it's available for Mac, PC, iPhone, Android, Chrome plugin, Firefox plugin, you name it. It's completely cross-platform and it syncs in the cloud. So it's better than keeping passwords on sticky notes. Yeah, yeah, we don't wanna keep passwords on, hold on, let me take these <laughs> notes off my monitor real quick. Okay, yep, no more passwords on sticky notes. All gone. Um, and the autofill, of course, that's a lifesaver because nobody can remember any of them anymore um, unless you're Crystal and you just use the same password on every site. She used to, she doesn't anymore. We've, we've scolded her enough times that now it's a, a unique password on every website. Um, and another cool thing that we use is we have multiple vaults with different team members Act, having access to different vaults in here. So it's secure, you know, there's financial passwords in here that I don't have access to or whatnot. And that's just a great way to have a, a nice managed business password manager. <laughs> Grammarly. So a lot of us use Grammarly. Um, and this was a great tip from Crystal. She got a lot of us using this. And even though we have Jason on staff full time, he often gets pretty overwhelmed with all of us saying, hey, can you edit this email? Can you, can you edit this uh, chunk of copy that I have? Can you edit this dialog box? So for little tasks like emails and things like that, Grammarly is really nice. And uh, it keeps Jason from getting bogged down <laughs> with our minutia. But uh, understandably, he does not necessarily like Grammarly, nor does he use it or have it installed on his computer. Um, but he's better than Grammarly anyways. That's why I put his picture in there. That's a much better icon. If, if your software had the icon of Jason's face, I think I'd use it more often. Oh, yeah. Well, especially for error messages. Like, <laughs> your has an apostrophe. You know, I'll be like, whoa, okay, okay. Okay, thanks, Jason. Yeah. <laughs> Um, and again, that's cross-platform. You can install it on anything, uh, Chrome plugin, Mac, PC, phone, et cetera, which is fantastic. This is, uh, this is pretty powerful. We love Slack. Um, I will admit it at times gets a little bogged down with GIFs, but for the most part, it's fantastic. And I know everybody uses a, an Office IM. I think way back in the day, what, what did we use, Jared? Was uh, Yahoo? 
Yeah, I think we had Yahoo, didn't we? Yeah, I think we had Yahoo before. I think Slack. so, yeah. And it was just because it was in use and it was there and everybody was using it and it was fine. Um, and then once we converted over to Slack, it has a lot more options and different channels and different um, things we can do with it. Well, one of the things that I love doing with it is, especially with people like Jason and Jake who are often working out of the office, it's quicker for me to call them using Slack than with the office phone, especially like a lot of times I'll already have my headphones on for my computer. So all I have to do is click their uh, profile on Slack and click call and it'll just dial, start calling them right away through voice over IP. And that's just fantastic. That's a really nice feature as well as the quick screen sharing options through Slack just because it's always open, it's right there, it can do a lot of things that we need. Absolutely love it. Um, and there's cool things you can program in there too with a little Slack bot. You can see there, I'm like, hey, what's the password? And it'll just tell you, boop, boop. So you can program it to give you like nice handy responses that at, at your fingertips at any time. It's really wonderful. But the, uh, the gifts, they do get a bit much sometimes. Be, be careful of those, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, this is a tool that Alex and I use really extensively. Uh, I love this guy. It's another uh, browser software. You just go to lucidcharts.com and the free version of it is surprisingly extensive. You can do a lot with just the free version. We have the professional version um, and it's just great because Trying to make a flow chart without a tool like this is kind of a nightmare to edit all the arrows and move things around. And this one's just so intuitive. It's just click, click, done, click, click. And then you can drag these around and click here, drag it here. It'll just automatically reshape everything. And so we've used it a lot for, you know, like the, this is an example of one of the lighting things that we were trying to figure out. And it's just nice to kind of map it out ahead of time before we dove in and got messy. So yeah, that's something that Alex and I really enjoy. Oh yeah, this one came from a couple of employees. I know Yara and Amanda, this was on their uh, recommended lists. Using uh, the phone, the phone camera as a scanner app. And I didn't even realize that there were scanner apps out there, but I had uh, ditched my scanner a long time ago and just started taking pictures with my phone of documents that I needed digitized. But there's some really slick apps out there now. Uh, these two are at the top of the list, Cam Scanner and Genius Scan. Um, and I just think it's fantastic because remember how big those scanners used to be? I mean, it's like a foot and a half long by a foot wide. It's like four or five inches tall. That's a lot of real estate on your desk. So now you've got your phone in your pocket and with a super high quality camera and you can digitize your documents, boom, boom, done. So that's fantastic. This is a fun one that I oops, just started using recently um, and then talking with some other people in the office. Um, Bennett uses Moom. Um, oh, well, before I dive too far into it, just managing your windows and moving things around. Because if you're like me and you're working and you have a kajillion windows open, it gets kind of cluttery real quick and you're trying to, okay, which one's which? So there's a couple of really cool plugins. This one that I have installed right here, I just go boom and it does that quarter, that quarter. It's this one that's installed for windows is just expanding on the, um, existing uh, snap feature of Windows where it'll snap your window to the right half of the screen. And this little plugin, um, which I actually forgot what it was called, will just give you more options for your snapping. Um, that one is, the one that I just used, is, doo -doo -doo. I don't remember which one it is. Um, but it's fantastic, I love it. And on the Mac, there's another one that we have with keyboard shortcuts. So I can just go boom, I want that in the top corner with my keyboard shortcuts, move them around. It's really convenient because um, I always have a ton of things open. I'm like, okay, that's too big. I need it over there. Perfect. And I need this over there. And then, yep, there we go. 
So I really enjoy using those plugins. They work really well for us. Um, now I got to find my, my Chrome. There you are. So a couple of the main ones, that, the one that I used on Windows, that's right, it's called AquaSnap. That's a really popular one. Uh, Display Fusion is another one. On Mac, there's uh, all of these. Some of them are totally different than others. I like the simple ones with really simple keyboard shortcuts. I use these uh, pieces of software probably 100 times a day. I'm moving Windows around uh, automatically with keyboard shortcuts. Bennett is an interesting guy. He has, how many monitors does he have? Like 40, I think? <laughs> well, we, we stopped, wait, was he five? It's four or five. Yeah, I th yeah. it used to be in the double digits as, as far as I'm aware. So he liked this one called Moom, where you can program and save your window positions. So when he shows up in the morning, he fires up all the software and then he fires up Moom and it positions all of his software and all of his windows exactly where he wants it automatically. So he can have it the same every day with a couple of clicks. And I was like, wow, that's pretty slick. And with all that, all the screens and all the things that he's got going on over there, that makes a lot of sense. Hey, well, he's got like 10 things on startup, all these little things pops <laughs> up. And, like, and so I, I can see why it would take him half an hour just to get all that set up every morning. Yeah, right. Could you imagine just dragging every window into little positions on each monitor where he likes it again every time? <laughs> so yeah, so this is definitely a time saver. Definitely a great productivity tip. Um, so dive in and see which one works for you. Here's a couple of our recommendations and there's other ones out there as well. Um, and while I was putting this list together, I had a couple of other items that didn't warrant full explanations, but I, I just felt like they had to be listed. Just real quick, simple tricks. Um, a couple of these links are really, really nice. File.pizza. I just found this, I love it. Yeah, there we go. It's, uh, you upload a file and then, there we go, it's kind of a big file. I can send this link to someone and it, they can download that file as long as I have this tab open using uh, a torrent system, kind of a peer-to-peer -peer network. And it's really slick really easy to use, nice for transferring large files. And so all you have to do as the sender is leave this tab open. Just kind of like a nice little like dirty trick, like quick, easy, done. A couple of other nice ones, uh, trying to figure out what font you need for a document. You can upload an image and it'll tell you what font it is. That's absolutely stellar. There's a lot of internet checking software out there. And there's this one that's just easy to remember, fast.com. So that's nice. I ran this test before I started the webinar, so I would get the kind of the maximum speed. I'm sure it's a lot lower than that now that we're streaming and recording. Um, yeah, we've got great internet here. Um, so that's just a nice, easy one to remember. Bug me not, that's nice to use disposable emails for all those like little tiny trial forms all over the internet. Really quick and dirty screen sharing called Dead Simple Screen Sharing. It's through a Chrome plugin. So that's nice if you're in a pinch and you need to show something to a remote coworker and your screen sharing software isn't working. You know, it's nice to have a little backups now and then. Aspect Ratio Calculator. We use that all the time because we're, we're looking at different uh, video sizes and image sizes for different aspects, um, trying to figure out what the different ratios are. Those. It's just a couple of web pages with, if you Google that term, the top two or three results are all basically the same. Um, this is one of my favorites that keeps my day interesting. I have the Google Arts and Culture uh, plugin right here on my Chrome. And what it does is every single day, there's a new empty tab painting. And it just changes every single day. And if you're sick of this one, you can change it right here. Like, oh, I'll, oh, I like that. Oh, I like that. That's great. So then all day today, every time I open a new tab, it'll be that one. And then tomorrow, it'll be a different painting. So that, that one's really nice. I got to say, I really love that. Do you have anything like this uh, to add, Jer? Any quick little... 
Um, I have, I mean, I, yeah, you know, I, um, I'm more on the, on the phone app side, but it got yeah. me thinking of, um, uh, one thing I didn't mention is I have a little convert app to convert units that I end up using all, all the time. Oh um, yeah. That would be super convenient. You know, you know what, what's that app called? Oh, let's see here. It's a convert. I think it's just called a uh, converter. Converter. Nice. Yeah. Um, let's move on to graphics and design. So this is definitely stuff that I spend a lot of time with. And in this day and age, when everybody's wearing a lot of hats, everybody has to do a little bit of graphic design every now and then, no matter what it is. So we'll start with uh, screen mock markup stuff. Uh, this is definitely convenient. I'm sure you've seen all of these pink arrows, like not really pink. I'm not sure if this is it's a magenta, but uh, you've probably seen those in our documentation um, screenshots that Jason writes. And that's because we've just fallen in love with this piece of software called Skitch, which is unfortunately Mac only. Um, and it's just wonderful the way they have it set up. It's really easy to use adding highlights, arrows, text, couple clicks, done, export, move on to the next image. It's great when you're doing large quantities of things and you don't need to get bogged down uh, with the details, which Jason is doing large quantities of screen markups. So we use this all the time and we would encourage you to use something like this. Uh, Snagit is a fantastic piece of software for Windows. Uh, that one is made by TechSmith, who also makes Camtasia, which we also use. But Snagit, uh, you, can, you can use it to take a screenshot. You can use it to mark up the screenshot like this. You can also use it to do screen recording. And then if you're sending us a ticket and you're saying, when I click on this one thing and it doesn't work, well, it's really helpful for everyone if you mark up your screenshot first with a little text and an arrow kind of showing us to what we're trying to look at on the image so we don't have to try to read the text and interpret it and figure out exactly what it is that we're looking for. It's just a, a giant time saver for everybody. So if you're submitting screenshots for tickets, I would highly recommend that you use Skitch or Snagit to um, mark up the screenshots and help uh, point us to the, to the problem area. This is a common situation, uh, image attachments, just too big for your email. Your email goes, sorry, you can't send this image. It's 40 megabytes. And so a lot of times you just give up or, you know, you have to open it in Photoshop or a big piece of software and try to figure out how to downsize it. And then that takes a bunch of time. Uh, so now there's a couple of automated systems that are really convenient. Um, the two top ones that I've found this program on Mac that I use and this website, Tiny JPEG, which I love because they have this cool little panda guy on there. But you just drag all your images in there, it compresses them, and then you can download them all at once. And it's extremely convenient. So as a matter of fact, I can quickly show uh, the version of that that I have on this. Here it is, Image Optum, right? So if I have um, all of these images that I need for for a project, you can see their size right here. I just drag them over here and it just goes chug, 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 and it just reduces them. Oh, it didn't, it didn't do anything because I've already done that to these images. It only did that to one, so it reduced it by that one. Um, but it's uh, really convenient and then it'll automatically compress them. And the best part is you don't really notice a visual difference in the images because it's doing a, a digital compression of finding the places where it can save space in the file size. And so most times you don't even notice a difference. Wonderful tool. Um, the other one uh, works basically the same way, the online one with the panda. You just drag your images in, it chugs away, then you download them, and then you're off. And of course, Nowadays on the web, there are a ton of resources online. These are websites that I use so commonly. Uh, most of us here that do any graphics like Paul, uh, Kyler, me, Damien, 
we're all referencing these websites constantly, especially uh, these font ones, Font Squirrel and Google Fonts. There's just great fonts available. These free stock images, you know, stock images used to be kind of bland and whatnot, but uh, Unsplash, this site is amazing. If nobody knows about it, all of these images are available to use and they're all just fantastic, high quality, stylish. Yeah, it's wonderful. So bunch of other stuff on here, icons, graphics. I got that from that place, Vecteezy. Um, and th the other thing about these websites, uh, some of these, of course, you got your banner ads and your fake download buttons because it's free. So those are kind of sketchy, um, but this one, Icon Finder, really, really nice quality, reputable, same with this and all of these other websites. So maybe these, if you're on Windows, maybe stay away from, so we'll just, we'll just, we'll say, oops, maybe. And let's see, what do we got next? Canva, I don't know if you guys are familiar with Canva, but that's a great graphics tool that runs in the browser. Um, this is a tool that someone over in the sales office would use. I know Panda uses this. Um, I think uh, Hannah uses this as well when they have to do a quick graphic for any sort of, uh, you know, promotional thing. And they're not necessarily an Adobe wizard because the Adobe software can be a little bit intimidating if you don't have any experience in it. So Canva is fantastic. And isn't uh, it like $5 a month or something? It's some ridiculously reasonable price. You know? It is. It's extremely affordable. And like the free version is really limited, but it's totally affordable and really worth it. They have a, a ton of templates for flyers and brochures, social media posts, business cards. Um, it's, yeah, it's great. So people that use this, um, like I said, if you don't have Adobe experience and you need to do something, somebody just commented in the chat box that they're using it for their wedding invitations. Nice. So there you go. That's a good example of somebody uh, using Canva to get productive. This one I love, uh, paint.net. This was recommended by Jer. I wasn't familiar with this until he showed it to me. And so this was my face when I discovered this. <laughs> It's so cool. It's so lightweight and it just, it's just for the simplest stuff and it loads so fast. So yeah. 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 It loads fast and it has uh, some of the really key features that makes Photoshop stand out from the rest. Back in the day, Photoshop was the only program that had layers and a magic wand for selection and a tool palettes and the, the history that goes far back than like just a control Z that goes once. So now a lot of these other programs are uh, incorporating those Photoshop like elements and paint.net has all of that stuff available right here. It's a nice free program, which means we recommend downloading it from the app store because as with any free program that you download, try to, stay away from those uh, bulk free software download websites uh, like CNET and all that stuff. Just kind of try to avoid that and download apps from official app stores or the manufacturer's websites specifically. This is a, a chunk of software that I use at home. We have Adobe here and I've been an Adobe guy all my life, but when I have to do side projects, which isn't super often, I still need access to robust professional grade stuff. And I decided to ditch my Adobe um, subscription a long time ago. So I found this program, Affinity Photo. And just like I was saying about paint.net, it has the Photoshop like features um, and it kind of goes a little bit further. It's a paid program. There's no free version. I think there's a free trial available, but uh, if you're, if you're somewhere in between a design professional or a former design professional that doesn't want to lock into an Adobe subscription, there's some cool mid range software like this that's available. And I tried a couple versions out of other companies and this is the one that I found. So this is like the, the best, the sweet spot in between like paint.net and Adobe Photoshop. It's like right in the middle and uh, it's, yeah, it's really nice. 
Okay, so video, um, I'm sure you know we do a lot of video work here at Land Effects. We release webinars uh, nearly every Friday. We release power tips every Friday and we are producing a ton of content. So what kind of video tools do we use? Because I'm sure you all use a lot of video stuff too, whether you're attending or maybe editing or doing screen captures. Um, you're all viewing this on Zoom, so that's a really core piece of software that we use uh, dozens of times a week, whether we're giving independent presentations or training sessions um, or, uh, or webinars. So we love Zoom. We've tried a bunch of the other ones. We tried the Adobe Connect stuff. We tried Citrix and uh, the GoTo uh, meeting, GoToWebinar stuff, TeamViewer. Um, we, we've had our fair share of headaches with webinar type software. So we found Zoom, we love it. We, do, we have recently found a couple small limitations, but it's, it, they were not deal breakers for us. So we're really into it and uh, I'm glad you're able to use it to watch this webinar today. Um, we use Camtasia to do all of our video editing, especially our power tips. Um, you'll see all the really cool editing in the power tips with the screen annotations and the arrows and the animated text and the fades and the background music, a little bit of animations now and then. All of that is done in Camtasia. Um, a lot of people on our staff use it. And so we're talking about landscape architects, irrigation designer experts, um, you name it, people that don't have a background in professional video editing. So that's why we love Camtasia because those people without that background, granted they're really smart people who are computer savvy, um, it's just still nice to just fire up this piece of software, throw in your video, do some editing, add the stuff you need, export it, boom. It's fantastic, way easier to use than professional video editors like Final Cut Pro and all of that stuff, Adobe Premiere. Um, so that's fantastic. Um, and I use this tool called Handbrake a lot. That guy is great for compressing videos. Um, if you've tried to take a screen recording of uh, some software issue and tried to send it to us, you've probably discovered, oh, this file is giant and I can't send it through the ticket system or an email. So I've used Handbrake a lot for that specific purpose. And also when we're embedding uh, MP4s in a web page, we want to compress it as much as possible so that it doesn't take a million years to load on your browser. Um, so this is a great piece of software. It's free Mac or PC because uh, it's open source and it's been around for a long time. So that's a great one for a little video tool. Uh, recording videos of your screen like we were just talking about. Here's another case of Mac users being spoiled. We have access to this built-in QuickTime player, file, new screen recording, click record, draw a square in your screen, boom, it records your screen and then you do whatever you want and it, it makes a video of it. So that's another case of us being spoiled. On the Windows, there is a thing built in. It's on the Xbox app. It's a piece of software inside that called Game Bar that was originally meant for um, like, you know, Steam and all of those platforms where people stream their uh, video game play. So it was intended for that, but now people discovered that they use it as the default screen capture software on Windows. It's slightly cumbersome to find it and use it. So there's that other piece of software that I recommended earlier called Snagit. That one's great. That's that same company that makes Camtasia really easy to use. It's not that expensive. I think it's like $50 and uh, it's just super convenient and uh, just a great piece of software. So those are, those are your two options on the Windows. And on the Mac, of course, like I said, we use QuickTime or we use Camtasia, which has its own built-in screen capture options, which we use for our power tip productions. And then of course, after you record, a video of your monitor, use that handbrake software to compress and get that video smaller so that you can send it to us. And if it doesn't fit in the ticket system, you can use a file sharing software like File Pizza or something else to send us a link for a bigger, bigger file. 
Ah, travel. I know this is a fun one. Uh, we spent a lot of time traveling. Uh, how many trade shows a year do you go to, Jer? Well, it's between four and seven, usually. That's a lot. And then you add the university tour on top of that. So that's a, a lot of planning. That's a lot of flights. That's a lot of transportation. That's a lot of hotels. Um, Travify is one piece of browser software that we've used to plan our trips. There used to be a free option available. Um, they have discontinued their free option. Um, and it's again, one of those pieces of software that's absolutely worth paying for, especially if you're planning business trips. This is a screenshot from uh, my vacation like two years ago when it was still free. And it was just so nice to use it so that you had it all there on your phone or on, on your laptop and you could just pop in the flight number and it would automatically spit out the departure time, arrival time, everything else so that you can plan everything around that. It's perfect for itineraries, especially multi-leg leg, uh, trip itineraries. Uh, without this kind of software, you know, making an itinerary is quite cumbersome. Yeah, it's pretty. It's pretty cool. It's it's got a few little quirks to it. It's I think we, we still think it's the best. But you know the little things like you can just drag the, uh, the the confirmation email in, and it'll automatically read in the flight number and the time and all that um, from from the email. So so you're not having to type that in. Um, oh. So that's really slick. So like Crystal just drags all those confirmation emails in, and starts from that, and then you know manually adds in okay, get an Uber, you know, things like that. Um, so it's, it's pretty slick. That is really slick. I didn't know it had that feature. That's really nice. Um, what else do we use for travel? Um, here's a couple things that Jer had recommended. Avenza Maps, great for downloading maps for offline use, you know, so you don't have to burn up your data looking at Google Maps, try and figure out where you are. Obviously, a major, major bonus right there. And of course, Jer recommended flight stats as well so that you can kind of check in uh, live to make, see what, uh, what's going on with your airplane. Yeah, never trust what they say. No, they're, they're, uh, <laughs> never trust what they say. I mean, because you always you just like, because what's great about flight stats is, you know, you just punch in your flight number and then right underneath it, you can click on um, what flight um, is, is this coming from. So you click on that and you're like, oh, okay, well, it still hasn't even left the ground in Phoenix. Mm. So what do you mean it's only delayed 20 minutes? It's right. clearly going to be an hour before it gets here. Right. So that's oh. where it's super nice. Man, I actually, yeah, I wish I had that. Oh, I got stuck in um, Lisbon. And they're like, yeah, it'll be delayed 20 minutes. And next thing you know, it'll be delayed 40 minutes. Next thing you know, it'll be delayed an hour and a half. And I'm like, if I'd have known that at the beginning, I wouldn't be sitting here now. So yeah, this is, I will definitely use that in the future. That's fantastic. Um, and it looks like we're, we're winding down towards the little fun section at the end. Um, phone games that we do not play in the office. No, no, no. Um, Polytopia. This was one that Jer recommended as a good strategy game that's like a, 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 a brain puzzle game. How, how would you describe that? Well, I like it. It's it's a it's a little conquest game, but it's got um, you know you have to you you you're buying basically your different units, and you you spend research on things. But it's always a random map, um, and, and so I, I've just always liked those little conquest games where you, you know you have to budget for what units you're going to buy, um, and uh, having the random map makes it just always playable to me and it's you know little guys with swords and one of the one of them has dragons and there's boats and it's like this is so much fun that's awesome you know just get your brain on something else for 30 minutes you know yeah absolutely a little wind down after work or something but the uh, chips the chips of fury worked out great um when we were all on the the train down to la for last year's uh expo and we had a deck of cards and we're like, Hey, let's play cards. And we're like, well, so we don't have poker chips. And then Paul found chips of fury and you just all, it does require an internet connection, which is a teeny bit unfortunate, but it let us set up. We're playing uh, Texas Hold'em and, and, and we can just, you just, everyone has your phone there and you do your betting on it and it takes care of all that. So it's virtual poker chips. 
that's really slick. I like that a lot. That's, yeah, so you don't have to travel with a giant case of poker chips. <laughs> yeah, I feel like, like a weirdo. Let me get my case of chips out on this tiny little table on the train. <laughs> <laughs> and of course a, a ton of us in here play mario kart just because i think everybody loves mario kart so that i i didn't know that it was on the phone until last week somebody here showed me and i was like oh okay that's tonight gone um let's see oh and of course uh, all of the sales office over there is playing this game covet uh -huh. every time we go to lunch they're talking about their outfits and they're trading stuff they're super into it and i was like should we? I, I look at it i still don't understand what either of these are up. i don't get it <laughs> <laughs> but uh you know what they those ladies dress nice and they're always fashionable so it's cool <laughs> um there's also you know um browser plugins for coupon codes uh i know Amanda and Shelby use these when they're uh, buying supplies for the office to make sure that they're getting the best deal possible. These kind of uh, browser plugins will scour the internet for coupon codes uh, and automatically plug them in to whatever uh, shopping cart system you're using. And so it's really, really convenient, really helpful. We definitely recommend it. We definitely use them to save money. So that's good. This is the grand list of everybody here and the software they've recommended. So I really liked this. Uh, it was fun for us to talk to everybody else here about what software they use. And, and then I, it, it really put a couple of new pieces of software into my thing now. Like here's Jer's. Uh, we were talking about all of these ones that we had reviewed. Uh, Crystal started everybody using Grammarly. She also got everybody using Freedcamp. Um, which makes sense because she's running the free camp and doing the project management. Um, Jake had a couple of cool pieces of software here. Um, he's using this calc software for uh, doing uh, like irrigation calculations and all kinds of different stuff. He had this really cool piece um, of software that I'll talk about later that he showed me that now I use. Uh, Bennett Moom, the multi window saving thing, uh, a couple of other um, neat stuff that he used, really utility heavy stuff. Shelby with the uh, with that uh, coupon code stuff, Pinterest. Um, Amanda had recommended that Genius Scan to me, and of course Lumion. Oh, and the level the the level built into the phone was really handy. Uh, Paul's is all very photo heavy stuff. You know, he's just really into taking pictures with his phone and using Photoshop, and and he's good at the software. So it's kind of neat. Uh, Amanda using Canva. Kurt, the programmer, using all this. I was asking him for fun software, and this is what he gave me. I was like, oh, he all right. Doesn't, he's like, he's like, he'll send me an email like nine o'clock on a Friday night. And he'd be like, oh, I think I figured out that thing. I'm like, would you go do something? <laughs> <laughs> this is his fun. <laughs> uh, Jason over here turned me on to the Overcast podcast app on my phone. So I use, use that now instead of the regular podcast app. Um, Megan t showed me how to use dark theme in Chrome. Um, here's all my stuff. I I tried to make it look like I'm a cool programmer guy too by putting this stuff. Yeah, in sure. Here. There you go. Yeah, but but one that I actually use extensively is the built-in uh, notes app on my phone, which syncs with my computer. Not sure. And you know, I, I didn't mention that's true. I I've got all my recipes now moved over there. Yeah, I love that way, app. It's way easier for me to go and and buy stuff at the store and then make notes while I'm cooking and all that. Yeah, right. And I have folders. I have a land effects folder that just has like to do lists and uh, miscellaneous notes in there. And so then when I'm not at work, I click out of the land effects folder and then it's all like my personal stuff. It's just extremely convenient and it's always synced to your phone and your laptop and whatever. So I, I, I use that thing uh, more than I should, I think. Uh, Sean is doing a lot of editing, professional video editing, Final Cut Pro, uh, some really cool phone games, Zombie Run. Uh, yep, Skull's over here using the Amazon Assistant in Chrome because she's uh, doing a lot of purchasing. Uh, Brian over here showed me this cool search app for the PC that is far better at searching your disk than the native Windows search option. So that's really neat. That's a, that's a, that's a good power tip right there. Like, oh, sometimes it's really hard to find exactly what you're looking for. 
Um, and of course he's a fitness nut, so he's got the fitness stuff in there. Kyler has awesome programming stuff in here. Dirty markup where you can just pop in a chunk of code and it'll clean it up and tidy it and auto margin everything the way it's supposed to be. Um, Damien, Lightroom, uh, Surfline, he's a big surfer, so he's always checking the, the surf report. Uh, James had some cool stuff, Getty Images, the Dark Sky app, which I just put on my phone and looked at uh, Venus last night. Hannah showed me Plant Snap, Jay, are you familiar with that one? Yeah, I think I fiddled with it and I just, you know, didn't quite do it for me, but I mean, I could see that I, I could see where it's going. I think yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. Kind of, it's getting there. It's pretty neat. And then uh, Alex showed me one tab, the extension on Chrome that uh, helps collate all of those tabs. If you're like Kyler or Alex and you have 40 million tabs open every time you're using your computer, I'm like, how do you find anything? But they're like, oh, well, we have this extension that organizes it. And it's like, oh, that makes sense. Because if you look at the top of their browser, it's chaos. So I think that's really important for their workflow. Like here's the fun side effect of this webinar. I always used to use this uh, color picker and I used it on the daily. I heavily relied on it. I had a keyboard shortcut map to it. Like I knew how to use it. But then Jake, uh, our irrigation expert was like, oh, you should use this program instead called SIP. And it stays over here. It remembers all the colors you did recently. And then you can save your palettes. You can change them. And the color picker options are just so much better. And so now I use this and it was like a $10 piece of software. And I was like, oh, this is way better. So that was just a fun side effect for me of this webinar is finding little pieces of software to make my day more efficient and more enjoyable. Um, hopefully by watching this webinar, you found something that will make your day a little bit more pleasant, a little bit more enjoyable and uh, a little bit time saving. Absolutely. I don't see any questions coming in. Um, you can still hammer in some real quick if you think of any. Um, but also, uh, um, I did not mention at the beginning, but uh, um, I should, I forgot. <laughs> um, but uh, this webinar um, was intended to kind of be part of our recommendation series uh, because next week is the infamous hardware recommendations. So hopefully you will be able to come and see the, of course, the opposite of software, hardware. <laughs> and, uh, and also if you have any of your own, of course, that uh, we missed, any of your favorite apps or things, please let us know. We'd love to get that for um, doing this webinar again next year. Um, and I guess other than that, I guess it's time to just wish everyone a happy weekend. Happy Halloween and a happy weekend. Thanks for joining.